Hello my soccer universe for a Serie A review just before the international break and yes I always say Serie A that's my favorite league at least of the top leagues but it's probably even my favorite league at the moment it's not and it's so funny because you know uh, it is all because the league is not going the way that I wanted it's all literally pointing to Inter yes I know you were keeping up track with Inter uh, but I don't think they will hang with them. Yes, we will see probably at the beginning of the next window, because uh, there is a Derby Italia coming up, uh, how it will go. I just think it's all Inter. It is all Inter at this moment, and that's what I don't like. I actually had, uh, and you know, as a Milan fan, that is the thing that damns it so much. Because uh, even the schedule is falling for Inter at the moment. When I look at it, yes, Next round, arguably they have the tougher opponent than Milan, but so far they have barely played any big opponents, they racked up a lot of uh, points, and when they will play the big opponents, they have enough confidence to actually get it done, and yeah, that annoys the heck out of me. In On top of that, they're getting the most penalties all over Europe. I mean, every game for Inter, there is a penalty. And they're slotting the item away, but this is not to take away from them. Inter are a really, really strong side. Lautaro Martinez at the moment is one of the best strikers in Europe. His partnership with Turam is excellent. The Vermin, Cialanoglu, is also really, really excellent. Uh, Di Marco, yeah, he's playing his heart out. Uh, you can tell he's playing for his favorite club. They got actually solid as well. And that's the other thing that really... As a Milan fan, it annoys me, but uh, if you look at it from a more new no, no, perspective, it's actually quite quite impressive. Uh, journalists have been writing about Inter's financial problems and their demise for at least now three seasons in a row. Ever since they uh, won the title, yeah, we have to sell off our best players. But they managed to not only replace them kind of adequately, and every year you look at uh, the transfers they've done, okay, yeah, that's a decent player, but we, we don't know about it. It all works out for them. They actually, and to to degree that they're not getting worse, they're actually getting better. And that's a big testament uh, to uh, Pepe Marotta, but also to the system Simone Inzaghi is playing. Milan, on the other hand, yes, financially the team is sound. That uh, the club is sound. The team, though, uh, I know what Pioli wants to do. He wants to play attacking football and very aggressive and always on the forefoot. I'm actually very much in favor of that. But it's not working at the moment because you still have injuries. And whenever you have injuries, I always look a little bit at the medical department because Inter plays uh, equally um, high intensity, especially under Conte. And they did not have the amount of injuries. So that's number one. But number two, uh, you not only have in injuries, it's also, um, I don't know. I really like Pioli. I really do. I'm not Pioli out, but he's getting it wrong so often at the moment. Uh, on this on this weekend, I mean, instead of calming down, down, down the game, uh, it, he never could wrestle it back. And he is, yeah, it's so stuck. And then the thing that really annoys me is, the amount of yellow cards and the amount of red cards, most in the league. And this is where you lose it. And this is our, 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 our group where they have lost it. They have now international, between the two international windows, they've only had two draws and two losses. Yes, there were tough opponents in there, but there were also opponents in there where you should have wrecked wreck up the wins. And uh, it may very well be now with eight, ga uh, eight point gap that you're falling behind. As I said, you were getting the wins, win, 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 win. It's not pretty. It's actually, I, I mean, I've spent the last v v v video on Juve, but um, I don't think that Juve will be able to hang with Inter. Inter are just, they have everything. They, they literally have everything. Uh, they are very seasoned side. They know when to slow it down. They know when to pick, 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 pick it up. And that's really, really, really scary. I would say we run through the games and we haven't even talked about the Rome Derby because there was not much to talk, talk about, but, but we'll get to that. And let's start, yeah, I already said about Lecce Milan. I mean, F coming off this great win against PSG, uh, it looked all good in the first half. Milan were uh, controlling the game. 
um, had good chances, a low, loads of possession. The only down was that Leao after 10 minutes had, had to come off and Okafor came on. Uh, but it didn't matter, matter much. You had Hernandez uh, assisting Giroud for head in 28th. And then finally Tijani Reinders gets a goal. Uh, makes it 2-0. He even hits the post. Probably should have looked out for someone else. But it really looked well. My Saturday afternoon was going well. I knew that the Sunday will be a little bit more. But you saw already the video on uh, the Derby loss for Lusk. It looked ahead in, in, in the back. It looked even... With Calabria having to come off and Musa going on. Even that, I think for the first 15 minutes of the second half, I was even thinking that, yeah, Lecce can be threatening, but honestly, we have them in the back. There's nothing gonna happen. And then Sansone scores. And then you use Musa. Teo is on, on the floor. He doesn't play the ball out. He loses the ball. And Sansone plays it to Banda. And it's 2 2 out of nowhere. And then Milan are like headless chicken. And what I also do not understand, I mean, he brought them finally for Florenzi on. I don't think it was necessarily a positional thing. It was Musa's mistake that cost Milan here. Um, he's a young guy, don't really want to play them. But the substitutions were so uninspired. I mean, you bring Musa on. Okay, Musa has been really, really good. You bring for Florenzi on for Pobega. Uh, I don't know what was the injury situation because, you know, uh, there was definitely some punch missing up front, especially compared to the PSG game. But then you bring Jovic on. I think I don't want to see Jovic any, any, anymore in Milan shirt. He has he has been literally doing nothing. And then having two immobile strikers up front. No, not doing it for me, honestly. And then while you try a little bit, you probably should sure have lost the book. Piccoli scored the winner. Yes, there was a foul. Unfortunately, they, they, this came back. But I was destroyed. And this would have been a great winner to, uh, to boot. I mean, it was a really a great shot where even many of them. But uh, again, points lost. And yeah, at this rate, Milan will make top four. But not more, unfortunately. And then right on the heels of it, it's kind of Jewish. I don't want to say show how it's done. But they get a really... I don't want to say even nasty win, but you know, they just get okay, with Bremer and Rugani scored two goals, ridiculous goals after head, uh, after um, crosses in from a corner. Yes, Dosena pulls one back, but you will see it out, and that's all that they have been doing. It's not pretty. I can't even tell you much about what's happening there because the game was just blah. But this is Juve for you at this moment. Um, so yeah, the evening game then Monza Torino 1-1. Uh, we don't need to talk about it. We have to talk a whole lot about uh, the uh, the Sunday Sunday games. I mean, it started already with Napoli losing at home to Empoli. This was a freak loss. Uh, Napoli created chances, had chances and probably should have scored. The goal came in stoppage time uh, and it just was the perfect storm in, in, in a way. It was not that it was, uh, an, it was not a good performance, but it was not that Na Napoli wouldn't have, have deserved that win. However, it was enough to get Rudy Garcia out. And I have been saying at the beginning of, of the season, this was probably one of the most uninspired appointments that I can think of. You go from Spalletti to Rudy Garcia. Yes, Rudy Garcia had a good start at Roma, but it was so long and everything that he has touched since has turned to shit. Let's be honest. So, uh, not really impressed there and I'm not surprised that he's out. Yes, they bring in a uh, seemingly Igor Tudor. I have my questions whether he will fit the team as well. But at least Tudor knows Serie A and has been doing quite well with Verona as well. And I think probably him OM uh, would have liked that he stays there, which did not happen. But yeah, uh, Napoli, and that's another reason why Inter, it's all pointing into it, because Napoli, their title defense is fizzling out big time. And that was such a spectacular team last season. But even towards the end of that season, it was already a little bit going flat, to be honest. Then we had two really interesting games. I mean, uh, the Apennine the, uh, derby between Fiorentina and Bologna. Um, a brilliant goal, all, all opening goal from Bonaventura. But then uh, uh, Bologna gets a uh, penalty that Xerxes converts. And actually, at this point, uh, Bologna then uh, went a little bit better and actually were really good. I was surprised to see Salamakers there. Completely forgot that he went to, to Bologna. And then uh, Orsolini actually scores the go-ahead goal. 
but he was offside. And that was a brilliant goal, goal as well. Fiorentina win it on a 48th minute penalty. And then Eck actually they could uh, shut up shop. I think over Fiorentina probably has deserved this win. But that's actually a very atmospheric game. They were also Celsius celebrating with a great T4. I think it was 50 years of the ultra uh, movement. So pretty, pretty good stuff. Pretty wild stuff also in Udine, where Udine should have won this game. Let's, there's no two <laughs> points about it. They miss a penalty. They score the go-ahead goal through uh, Wallace. Uh, then uh, create many, many chances. Until Ederson in stoppage time puts one in. It was really, really cruel. And it could have even been cruel because Atalanta had then the chance to win it. But overall, this was a nothing performance for Atalanta. It was everything about Udine. This is a game that Udine should have won. No winners also in the Rome Derby, uh, but yeah, that game had a good start. It As always, it, the build-up is great with Sari and Mourinho going at, at, at each other where uh, Sari, yeah, I have two days more, but I have to play the tough side of Feyenoord, whereas Roma play a friendly in the Europa League, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the disrespect from Mourinho, you know, the typical back and forth ahead, ahead, ahead of a Rome der uh, the Derby, the atmosphere, of course, always cracking. It's probably one of the most atmospheric derbies that you can have, despite a running track in the States as a stadium. The Rome Derby is right up there. The games are well. Lukaku have having a chance. Then a, a brilliant shot uh, from Luis Alberto uh, hitting the post. That, that would have been a sure five of our goal. But then it went away. And it's all because no one wants to lose the Derby. Uh, Rome is one of the few cities where winning the championship is not as important as winning the Derby. And that's exactly why this game fizzled out. Also, both teams are let's face it, are not in great shape. And yes, Roma have kind of gotten a little bit of a turn, uh, a turn around Lazio, also getting a little bit it going, but uh, they're still more mid-table than uh, going to the top. But, you know, the gap, given that Milan, Na Napoli, Atalanta and so on are also faltering and, and Fiorentina, the gap is getting closer, as uh, you'll see in the table that's shown here as, um, throughout the video as well. And then Inter. I mean, they played a home game against Frozen. I didn't watch it uh, too, too much because I knew the outcome was clear. That I missed probably the goal of the season. Yeah, that's where, where the highlights come coming from. All, all I can tell uh, Frozen I tried to keep it tight, tried to keep it in, 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 in at bay, which is really, really hard to do. And then Di Marco, just beyond the half light from the outside, sees that the goal is a little bit further out. A, a brilliant shot from, I think, 56 meters into to the net. That settles the game. They get a uh, kind of bogus pen penalty that Jalanoglu converts. Uh, I think it was, I mean, uh, Tirana is more or less falling down. Uh, not really diving, but more or less falling down. By the way, Frozen only have an Ibrahimovic, which I found very interesting. Uh, I don't think that this penalty should, should have counted, but of course, there's not enough for VR to overturn it. Intervene 2 0 without breaking a sweat as it has been done all season long. Inter still two points ahead, ahead of you, but I think they will look more. It's eight points ahead of Milan and uh, 10 to Napoli. Juve, I think, will probably finish high in this table because they can prepare for every game. But Inter on a different level. Yes, they had their blip in the previous window now, uh, but other teams blip more. It's as, sim as simple as that. And yeah, we have to see uh, where, where it's going, but it's all, all, again, pointing towards Inter. Or may it not, because we will see now after the international break. We have actually quite some inter interview with Atalanta, Na Napoli. Could be a very intense game. We have Milan Fiorentina without Giroud. I didn't even mention Giroud got sent off. Stupidly. Absolutely stupidly sent off. So probably Jovic lead, leading the line. Really don't like like, like, like that. Uh, so those are really interesting games already on Saturday. But then uh, we have Juve Inter. And I want to say, yeah, top clash. Watch it. No. <laughs> I'm not even sure I will watch it because it will be a turgid game because you, that's exactly what you will do. But it will be a turgid game that will Inter win, will win thanks to a Jalanoku penalty. I, I'm telling you right now. If this will be fireworks, I will be very, very surprised. 
That's it from me from Serie A for uh, this week. We're going now into the international break. Uh, there will be a La Liga video coming out later as well. Give me please a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.